take every opportunity to ask for a referral. This is episode 96 of the Marketing for Owners podcast. That's quite a few. It's kept me busy. One a day for, what's that, three? Oh gosh, that's months. I don't do weekends, but I've got to have some time off. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying it. I've been enjoying doing a little mini-series on referrals, but I promise this is the last one. Honestly, it's it. I won't do any more. We'll talk about it more in the system in the website. Of course, you can go to marketingforowners.com slash join. Membership is free, and that's where we give the really good stuff. Mm. So, back to that, asking referrals at every opportunity. This, again, is key. Remember on, on Friday, gave you the weekend challenge of naming the top 10 customers and going visiting them and actually asking them to refer you to their friends and colleagues. Now, this works. So, this is something we want to make part of your everyday business strategy. Opportunities are email signatures. Yes, they're usually unused. I hope you're not one of those ones who puts in one of those long disclaimer email messages. Oh, please, it's not necessary. Yes, a lawyer might have told you, but it's not necessary. Get rid of it, replace it with a marketing message or something about referring. In, uh, once you've sent an invoice to somebody, follow up with a question asking them how wonderful you are. How about the, the famous question that is the name of it? Oh, is it Net Promoter Score? Oh, well done, John. That might be it. But from 1 to 10, with 10 being the most likely, how likely is it that you would recommend us to a friend or colleague? When they answer back, if it was, say, a 7 or an 8, contact them. Contact them. Yes, you're going to have to speak to them and say, you gave us a, a 7 or you gave us an 8, that's wonderful, thank you very much, but what would it have taken to make us a 9 or a 10? Ask them specifically and then get into the conversation and say, okay, it's cause, so you think we're pretty good because I assume that's what they're going to say and you know that you are very good. Then ask them, would they actually refer you to a couple of friends or colleagues? Could they give you a name and a phone number right now? Because you will contact them. You will explain why you'll contact them. This won't be a, a spammy sales call. You will actually offer them a gift to just go and chat with them. The gift will be worth their while. And if they do that, that will make them look great. That's one way. How about in your email autoresponder series, once someone has purchased, remember in our system, once they've purchased, you want to move them on to become a preacher. Uh, Joey Coleman promotes the first 100 days as being the most important part of your relationship with your purchaser. That's where you forge their, mind, their opinion of you and how they're going to deal with you or if they're going to deal with you in the future and if they are going to recommend you. So work on them. Make offers. Give them something. When you send out your product, we're, we're an e-commerce business. When we send them out a, a fire blanket or a fire safety sign, we put something in the box and we say thank you and we offer something to them to pass to a friend or colleague that gets the friend or colleague a discount, an introductory discount. Yeah, it's free, obviously, other than having it printed. It's free, it just goes in the box. It's with the invoice, it's with the delivery note. They will not miss it. When your uh, reps or when your service staff or whoever has any touch point with the customer, Perhaps, um, again, we service fire extinguishers. When the service engineer has finished with the customer, at the end, why not ask 
for a couple of referring names where they can go and speak and give an introductory discount to. Or, if not, or if the person is, is not prepared to do that, hand over a couple that they can give away. Do not give them 50. Do not give them 10 or don't even give them six because they will not. That's a bit overwhelming. Give them two or three or ask specifically how many they want and ask and say or joke about it. Say, I don't want to give you too many because, of course, they just end up in the bin. How many do you want? Is two enough or would you like three? And that's it. Make every opportunity a chance with a customer, someone who has purchased from you. Don't forget, you're not going to ask for referrals until they are a customer. But when you refer, or when you ask, you want to make them look good. You want to give them something so that they can give a special offer to their friend, to their colleague, to their family member. Remember that, okay? And that's it. And if you follow those, go back and listen to the last four from, I think it was from last Tuesday. And those are the basic principles of becoming a referable business that cuts their marketing costs in half because their customers do the referring for you. It's a wonderful thing. Please, owners, go try this. Anyway, give you something else to think about. You want to read a new book this week. So the book for the week is, surprisingly, by Richard Koch again. I think he's got in once or twice before. But this is the 80-20 manager. And yes, he's wrote, written the 80-20 rule. But this is the 80-20 manager. Now, this one is for you as the business owner. What it's going to do is it's going to teach you about the Pareto principle where 20% uh, of your efforts gets 80% of the results, etc. And even though Richard does, uh, is at pains to point out that that's an approximate, it really does work. It, I mean, it might be 95-5 or something like that. But what he's saying is a small portion of your work, uh, a, a giant proportion of your gains comes from a small portion of your customers or a small portion of your work. So all you need to do is figure out what is getting the best results, what you're doing that's producing the biggest result and doing that first. Stopping doing the rest, perhaps altogether. Concentrating on the best result. It's a great book. Richard Koch is a great author. I love his work. And the best thing is, is he's actually genuinely a successful investor, business person, and he's at great pains to <laughs> boast about his investments. Some of them are ones that were remarkable. I wouldn't have thought Filofax would have made a fortune. I thought it was dead and buried. He made millions from it. Go read that and then come back tomorrow and we'll be on to some more great marketing tips.